Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of this Geometry Nodes game making series. This time, we're going to be turning this from a driving experience into a game. Some kind of achievement, something to actually go for. So what is it that makes a game? Well, something to do. Just driving is not really a game. It's just driving. But if we can go and collect items, then maybe we actually have a game state and you can, know, you can have them procedurally distributed. You can have a score counter, lots of things to do with this. So let's go ahead and make a scoring system. We're going to go into our game objects collection. I'm going to make a new object, just a standard plane here. And we're going to rename this one to be the score manager. Make a new geometry nodes tree. This one is going to be only need it once. So period score underscore manager. And what we want to do is essentially just distribute points on the surface of the mesh. So let's grab our terrain collection. And we will set this to relative. We will realize the instances. Once we've realized the instances for the ground, let's go ahead and distribute points on those faces. And let's just view what we've got. So right now there's a lot going on. Let's actually just cancel our input reader here. And we want to see our points. So right now, far too many points. Go ahead, change this over to pass on disk so that we can set a minimum distance between points. And we're also just gonna really reduce our density max here down to something like 0 0.001. That'll give us just a few. We still have a thousand points here. Let's set a minimum distance, I don't know, of maybe 30 meters. And in fact, let's go even fewer points here. Let's go down to 0 0001. There we go, somewhere around 100. That's still quite a lot to collect, but at least gives us something to work with there. And not too slow, not too slow here. Now let's put an instance on points node here. So IOP, and just for now, let's instance an icosphere, just so that we have something very obvious to work with. Now, in between the distribution of the points and the instancing of the icospheres, we're going to create a kill state. And what I mean by that is we're going to have a situation that a point is cold. So it's fairly easy to do. All we need to do is take a simulation zone because this is going to change over time. Plug this through like so. And we need to delete geometry inside the loop. Geometry is going to be deleted by a very simple criteria. Are you close enough to the game manager? So I'm not going to use the vehicle mesh because I don't want to be sampling against lots of topology. I'm just going to be sampling against the basic splines of our vehicle. So let's grab our game manager, bring this in here. Uh, we'll set this to relative. We will do a curve to mesh node to turn this into edges, which we can then use with a proximity node against those edges. And then I just need to kill these based on the distance. So whenever the distance is less than some value, this is going to delete a point. This distance here, we're going to put this actually into our control group. So add a new group controls, tab in, make a new output at the bottom here. This is going to be our pickup radius for collectibles and it will be subtype distance. Maybe we go for five or eight or something like that so that we can just drive in the vicinity. And I'll connect this up to this less than control H hide node options. There we go. So this is control J F2, the distance from truck. This up here, control J, this is the initial points and then we will just be creating our points our collectible afterwards so once we're playing this 
let's go for the monitoring the controller. If I drive near this, that one disappears. And we're going to need a bit more space here. So you can see as I drive around, I'm able to make each of these disappear as I come through. It's kind of like snake, isn't it? One thing that might be fun is if you were to create the trailers inside the first loop, inside that game loop, then you'd actually be able to extend it for every score that you went up by, which would be interesting. Then you would actually have a, <laughs> a way of having really a very snake-like experience, but with a driving game. Let's try and go through this one. There we go. So lots of fun, very simple mechanic, but you can now go and pick up all of these things. Now, something that I should just tell you, because this happened a lot in my testing, when working with a terrain like this, where we have lots of different tiles and the tile type is being chosen on our ground, if I go and have a look at that. So in our ground here, we are linking in the game manager, which is a simulation loop. So the terrain changes based on a simulation loop and the simulation loop samples the terrain. So that is already a dependency cycle, which could be potentially problematic. Um, once we are then also doing a score manager that is reading both the terrain and the game manager, that can also get a little bit confused. So it shouldn't. It shouldn't because once the data is created at the beginning, it should just load into the simulation input. But I have had it happen where it didn't like that these points were being created on a uh, on terrain that was looking at another loop. So I'll show you a fix for that now. So just in case you have the same thing, let's go back into our ground object. And just over here with our set position, these three nodes Noise Texture, Multiply, Combine XYZ. Let's Control G, put these into a group. And I'm just going to leave all of the information inside the group. This one is going to be called Terrain underscore Displacement Vector. Hide the node options, there we go. So the Terrain Displacement Vector, because we now have it in a group, I can make with a new collection down here. I'm going to call this one Terrain Sampler. A new object. Let's just add this, which is going to be again called Terrain underscore Sampler. And I don't need to use it again, so I'll do it with a period. Let's add a mesh primitive grid. Our terrain was 1000 by 1000. And we can simply use a geometry right set position using the terrain displacement vector. And then I can just increase this just until it's close, but not, not so much. Um, so maybe then we go up to a hundred, something like this. So it's fairly low resolution across the whole thing. But the important thing is that this is fixed. It's not going to change. There's no dependency cycles in here. Uh, we can maybe even go a bit higher. Or maybe 100 is fine, actually. That gives us 10,000 points. So there we go. Now, we're not ever going to look at the terrain sampler object, but the score manager, for example, can use the terrain sampler instead. So it's just going to use the, uh, the position sampled from the terrain sampler instead of the ground plane, because the ground is going to change its topology all the time. And that dependency cycle was causing me some problems in my testing. So for this to be a useful scoring system with some kind of achievements, I need two bits of information. I need to know how many points do I start with on the surface and how many points do I end up with after each loop happens. Now I can do this in one of two ways. I can either add one to an attribute every time I pick something up or an easier way and actually a lighter way because it happens not inside the simulation input. All we'd have to do do a store named attribute before, which is going to store the domain size of this point cloud as an integer on here, which can be called count underscore start. 
And then at the end, after the loop, before we instance, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to store the domain size for that point cloud as count underscore end. And from that bit of information, I can then derive the number that I've picked up or anything else like that. Right now, these are just balls. So let's make something a bit more interesting. Let's add a piece of art for our pickups for our collectibles. So let's go into our art scene. I'm going to make a new collection in here called collectibles. And for me, I'm just going to add a Suzanne to work with. So let's hide everything else. So I'm going to move her above the origin and I'm also going to scale her up a bit. So she's floating above something like this. And I'm also going to apply some materials to her. So let's just grab a shader editor. This one is going to be called gold. Your metallic, let's make it a bit oranger. Something like this. And then let's add another slot to our material. And we'll do this one as white glow. And I will apply this to both of her eyes. I sure know how to make her pretty. So let's grab, get rid of that principled node. We'll add an emission instead. And I'll set this to something like 10. Nice, nice bit of bloom on there. We're just uh, checking our EV. Yeah, I do have bloom on, so <laughs> set that how you want. Uh, maybe about five is a bit better. Good stuff. Now you can add as many collectibles as you want into this collection. And obviously you can just select them as uh, as just random instances as, as you might like. So I'm just gonna leave it as just Suzanne for mine. Let's go back into my scene collection. And under my score manager, let's grab my geometry nodes editor again. Rather than an icosphere, we're going to be using a collection info with collectibles selected, separate reset, pick instance. Uh, these might want to be a little bit bigger as well. So maybe we just increase the size of these a little bit. And let's do something fancy as well. Right now, if I press play, all of these Suzannes just stay where they are. Let's make them bounce and rotate. It'll be fairly easy for us to do, but it will just add a lot to the game, I think. So let's grab our score manager. And after the instance on points, we're going to do two things. First of all, we're going to grab a rotate instances node. And we can simply take a random value. Let's grab a random vector. And we'll set it to 0, 0, minus 1 and 0, 0, positive 1. And that will just give us a, a random Z value per point, which we can then scale based on the scene time node, which I will use the seconds of, because that is independent of frame rate. Let's plug this onto our rotation. There we go. Now we can see that all of them are moving. So let's frame up these four nodes. This is the rotation. And then let's also do a little bit of up and down bouncing. So let's grab a translate instances as well. Same kind of idea. We're going to be taking a scene time node. We'll take the seconds and we will multiply it by a random value. Then what we can do is we can put this through another math node set to sign so it's going to go bouncing like this and maybe we want it to just bounce more like uh, like actual bouncing which we can do by doing an absolute after the sign so instead of going from one to negative one it's going to go from one to zero and then back up to one without ever coming down into this negative space then we can use a, another multiply to change the height of these afterwards so they're bouncing to different heights. And then we can do a combine X, Y, Z to plug this into the Z for our translation. Let's increase our random here from maybe one to three. And we will increase the amount of these bounce. Maybe 1.5 to three.
There we go, something like that. Fantastic. So now when I drive through these bouncing Suzannes, it's going to add one to our score each time. And that is something that we can then track with the UI in the next session. So in the next video, we're going to be finalizing our game by setting up a proper camera. This is going to be a camera which will actually follow the truck. It's going to have different camera positions, which we're going to be able to choose between with our controller. And we're also going to have thumbstick controls to look left and right as we're going. So it's a nice little setup, actually relatively easy for us to do. But yeah, it makes a really big difference to the kind of the enjoyment or the, the feeling of this being a game. Quick note, if you have little artifacts like this on the edge of things, very likely to do with your clipping distances. So if you go on the end panel view and you change your clip start to something a bit more reasonable, like 0.5, then it's going to be much better for drawing your depth at large distances. We're dealing with a kilometer here, so I will go up to, uh, let's say three, three kilometers for my maximum distance. And that should just work a little bit better for this scale of world. So there we go, that's it for this one. We have created a score manager, which is gonna let us go through here and actually collect Suzanne's as we drive around. And it's gonna keep track of the score that we have. So super fun. Now it's a real game. We just need to add the camera controls so that we're not getting this fixed camera situation and a bit of UI so that we can actually track the score and the amount of time that we've spent driving around. There we go. I'll see you in the next session. Thank you.